Today is July 2nd, the year 2000, and we are preparing to go to the Western Hotel in Morristown, New Jersey, to a party in honor of Al Abraham, that's me, 80th birthday. And this is the invitation to the party. Here is the first guest to arrive, Ms. Vinnie Shaler, all the way from London, England. <laughs> to arrive, Mr. Chu Chin Yang from Taichung, Taiwan, all the way from there. Can't miss it. That's right, Abraham Can't miss it. I went fast and then carried it. I'm going to run down the lens. He's in the 
It's all of our small. Okay. All of ours.
<laughs> okay, I've read your arguments. And I've made my final decisions. Now let's begin the trial. Wait a minute. How can you have made your final decision? Shush you! <laughs> Don't start with me. I'm in no mood today. Now let's get on with it. I've heard quite a lot about this Alfred Abraham. <laughs> Where is he, may I ask? Right there, Your Honor. <laughs> what is he doing there? How does Mr. Abraham sit in the defendant's box? Move him there now, Sparky. <laughs> his boundaries, doing so much for his family and his friends, being so dear to them that they have no recourse but to turn a court of law to give him his just reward. I trust you will find Mr. Abraham indeed far too dear. <laughs> Your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are here today to make a very simple decision. Mr. Abraham is not the man you may think he is. Sure, he's always there for everyone. But your time is up. <laughs> sit down. Wait, wait, wait. I was like, you should sit down. Right? I was like, no. Please raise your right hand. <laughs> Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so I'll help you, Dad? Be <laughs> safe. <laughs> Mr. Lefkowitz, you see the man known to you as Uncle Al in the courtroom? <laughs> yes, I do. Right there. Please tell the jury the truth. Even though you are a lawyer, we want you to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the truth. Well, I'll try. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lefkowitz. Go ahead. Well, Uncle Al. There's many reasons he's so dear to me, but I will say a couple in particular. In 1976, Father, and, for, please. 1976 and for a few years thereafter, uh, Uncle Al would come down to Philadelphia for business. And I had my first experience with business dinners at some of the best restaurants in Philadelphia. And one of my dearest memories of Uncle Al, more recently, was when he left, in 1996, he left for an extended trip to Asia and let me use his apartment for an extended date with Donna, who, after we renewed our acquaintance, later became my wife. And as a supporting witness, I'd like to call my wife Donna. <laughs> Swear me in, please. You tell the promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. <laughs> After the apartment, we eventually bought our own house. 
and even had a baby, but that did not stop Uncle Al. The day we came home from, we, the baby and I came home from the hospital, we had four other children who needed attention, dirty laundry, it was cold, it was dreary out, everything was awful, and there was a big package in the living room of brand new clothes from Uncle Al and Aunt Glory. Then, a week later, the baby had his first religious experience. Some of you might have seen that. It was put on tape by Kelly. <laughs> and that was, of course, not of course, but we were very pleased because Uncle Al helped us and <laughs> he actually gave, gave his wrist. So, thank you, Uncle Al. And even today, if you notice what the baby was wearing, we made the baby, but Uncle Al and Anna made the clothes and brought the clothes. Thank you. Leftwoods, Mrs. Leftwoods. Defense, your witness. Hello, Mr. Leftwoods. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Leftwoods, do you recall a particular day in May 1972 when Mr. Abraham argued with you about. Just your time is up. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I haven't even started questioning this witness. Can't you see he's too moved and emotional to answer any more of your pesky questions? <laughs> we call to the stand Gary Frischman. <laughs> promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, even if it's not funny at all? <laughs> I'll try. Behold our shepherd, godlike, so absolute in his attraction that he needs not effort after his willing flock. A quiet, unassuming rock, steadfast, constant. A calming presence in our stormy lives, a touchstone always there for our returning. A patient, compassionate, oracle, wise, knowing, a guide along our own self-made paths lit by our own inner light toward greater self-knowledge and self-confidence. An impassioned giver, selfless, generous, seeking no return but the sharing in our success and accomplishment which he has championed. A willing receiver, gracious, happy, affording the giver as much or more satisfaction in having found a way to repay all that he has received. A true friend, challenging, accepting, ready to listen, reassure, commiserate, but also to scold, cajole towards righteousness an awesome champion, strong, real, exemplifying for us how best to attain our own life and self-actualization by his own wholehearted embracing of us and all the world has to offer. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. 
Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and to admit dental technicians like you are sadistic and cruel? And make up stuff about us having cavities when you really just need our checks to help them to help make the house payments? Dental hygienist, thank you and yes. He's elevated the pursuit of a bargain to an art form, demonstrating consistent effectiveness and efficiency in scoping and closure of the deal. Craftsmanship and designer cachet are shrewdly compared to the bottom line, price, while color and style are secondary considerations. <laughs> <laughs> Prime targets are Macy's and Lord & Taylor's. Oh, a feared force amongst the retailing echelons. The evidence. <laughs> what I have learned from a real Tommy Hilfiger, two ninety nine. <laughs> and while I was shopping, eighteen eight stainless steel gravy boat. That's mine. <laughs> Lobster claw crusher, a dollar twenty five. Thank you. <laughs> Anything more, Bob? Council rest, Your Honor. Ms. Olivia, nothing? <laughs> <laughs> nothing? What? Promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, or whatever will help your husband's case. <laughs> Miss Kerner? <laughs> Sweetheart, my love. <laughs> You changed your mind. <laughs> well, Uncle Al also is famous for his phone calls. His favorite time to call was in the morning as you're getting ready to leave for work or your day. <laughs> favorite time. Well, I've got him now. My favorite call, time to call is Sunday morning when he's getting ready to go out to visit Aunt Flory. <laughs> <laughs> he's everyone's Uncle Al. He's near and dear to all of us. Even my friends and neighbors down in Houston know him as Uncle Al. He's so close that when my friends came up from Houston to New York, I think for their first visit, what was a must-see stop on their trip? Uncle Al. Anything else, Bob wishes? No, Your Honor. I won't even ask you to sing here. Please raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, even if you will never get another series with resi residual payment? <laughs> Even when I, when I would, uh, I remember one particular time I was doing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, and in walks Uncle Alfred, uh, and everybody thought that, you know, the way the way he handles himself that he was my William Morris agent. <laughs> Even though he was a big-time show business, and the more he said, he would just say no, 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 no. The more people thought he was indeed uh, the big agent. People were trying to, uh, you know, trying to get get in with him to, to get signed. But uh, and when I, I got a break and got a. a, a TV series pilot, Uncle Al was there, and, and uh, when I did uh, stand up on TV, there's Uncle Al. So with Uncle Al, is, uh, I remember the, the, uh, the man you can count on. Even when I was starting out as a magician, Uncle Al would take me to a Lou Tannen's magic shop in New York City and buy me a few tricks, uh, which I would then you know, 
mess up and then finally be able to do, I suppose. Uh, so thank you, Uncle Al. And we honor to you today. I love you. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Defense. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Fishman, do you recall an incident about shopping for pants? <laughs> Oh, yes. With your Uncle Al, if that's who he really is. Yes. Uh, well, there was one time that I was... Yes. Hold on, hold on, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> story. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was uh, 13 years old shopping for, uh, shopping for pants with Uncle Alfred, and Uncle Al comes over with a pair of pants, and he says, Danny, try these on. And I felt the pants, and they were those kind of very itchy wool pants that I, has to, that I would have to wear to Hebrew school that I always hated. <laughs> that I couldn't wait to take them off. So I said, no, Uncle Al, thank you, I don't, I don't like those. And he says, Danny, just try them on. And I said, no, I really, that's not, I, don't, I don't like that kind of thing. He said, Danny, look at the price of these. <laughs> the $60 pants, marked down to 30 to 20 and look at this now. Fourteen dollars, try them on! And I said, Uncle Al, it doesn't matter. I, I won't wear them. They're uncomfortable. And Uncle Al said, Danny, for fourteen dollars, you can suffer a little. That's your story. That's my story. Set 
Mr. Abraham, you'll never be old. Though the years have passed so quickly now, your gym workouts have been many. Still, you still have much more of him and bigger than many men of 20. How do you do it? Is there a picture in the attic? It is just simple. Your zest for life is quite emphatic. From your trips with us to Freedom Land, to visits across the country, your love for us shows all the time, and your love by us a plenty. Oh, my sweet uncle. I remember as a boy, you'd meet me so many times at the top of the Port Authority bus terminal steps, <laughs> rescuing me from the riffraff of the 60s. <laughs> I was so thankful that you were there each time to whisk me off into the big city, to show me things a sheltered suburban boy would never see. As I grew, I'd meet you across town at your office at Congress Factors. You'd introduced me to corporate life, then I joined the League of Actors. <laughs> You did your best for me. When I was down, you gave support. We practiced baseball. Yep. Though you knew little of the sport. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh well, you're 80 now. It's so hard to believe. Seems just like yesterday you bounced me on your knee. As does the defense, except for one more thing. In 1972, when Mr. Abraham had an argument with what a shame. We're all out of time for today. <laughs> but first, I will give you my decision. Frankly, though, I'm not convinced that Mr. Abraham is too dear to his family and friends. I don't know what else could convince me. Your Honor, we have some uh, last minute surprise testimony. Proceed! We call back to the stand Bill, Gary, Danny, and all the Abraham nieces and nephews. I object! Wait a minute. <laughs> On the grounds? On the grounds? That I have no defense. Uncle Al is very dear to me, too, and I love you, Uncle Al. <laughs> now you're showing some smart sister for the first time in this proceeding. Thank you. Proceed, Bobby. Kids, do you see Mr. Abraham in court? Yes. Yes. Signify this by giving a big hug and a big kiss. Apartments 
California flew all the way here just to be here. And all of my old friends going back many, many years have come here. Uh, and I have friends from all my walks of life, including Mike and Gloria Lucarelli, who I have worked with, particularly Mike, for over 30 years and 35 years, who is one of the most important people in my business life. And uh, my friend Kevin Watson and his wife and family, who have been an important factor in my life. And it's, it's just so nice to be able to have everyone here. And above all, I want to particularly, on an occasion like this, although we are holding it so soon, I think that, I would like to think that the spirit of my dear beloved Joseph is with us today. And I know that he would have wanted to be here at this party. And he would have been so happy to have participated in it. And I would like everyone to observe a minute of silence in honor of Joe. And we must never ever forget him because if I deserve these honors, he deserved them ever more because he was the one who was the life of the party with his jokes and stories and his bubbly personality all over the place and keeping things happy and being happy that everyone was with him. And I like to think that he is with us and we are with him right now. You're here. Well, thank you all. The trouble is we didn't get your chin on our face. Well, this is back in the